Okay, so we're gonna continue our conversation about factoring, but today we're gonna to learn about factoring new types of trinomials. So remember, we've already looked at trinomials with leading coefficients of one, but today we're gonna to look at trinomials with leading coefficients that are not one. Okay. So our steps that we need to follow for solving these types of trinomials are a little bit different from the ones that we solved before. So our first step, and I'm going to use this example up here of 2n squared plus 5n plus 2, our first step is going to be to multiply the leading coefficient and the constant term. So the leading coefficient in this case is 2, and my constant term is this 2. So when I multiply them, I should get 4, 2 times 2. Our second step is to find a pair of numbers, to so find two numbers that multiply to whatever I just got in the first step. So multiply to 4 and add to the middle coefficient. So I want it to add to 5. So what numbers multiply to 4 and add to 5? I'll skip the thinking process here. 4 and 1. 4 times 1 equals 4, 4 plus 1 equals 5. Then we need to break up the middle term. So this middle term here, I'm going to break up into 4n plus 1n. Same thing as 5n. So I'll keep the rest the same. I'm going to have 2n squared plus 4n plus 1n, or just n, plus 2. And then, something you've seen before, we're going to factor by grouping. So I'll group these first two terms, these last two terms, and I should get 2n times n plus 2 plus 1 times n plus 2. And I can factor this out into 2n plus 1 times n plus 2. And that is how we solve these types of problems. Okay, let's move on to some examples. Okay, so in this example, before I get started, I want to point out that I added our checklist on the side here. It's getting a little lengthy, but I want us to keep this in mind as we're going through. I want to make sure that we go through all of these to see which kind we're factoring. So let's do that quickly. I have 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. Is this the greatest common factor? No, because not all of my terms share anything in common. So not greatest common factor. Is it a difference of two squares? I don't have two squares, and there's no difference, there's no subtraction, so no. Do I have a perfect square trinomial? Well, I do have a trinomial, but 2x squared and 12 are not perfect squares. Do I have a TLC of 1, trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1? No, my leading coefficient is 2. So we can rule that out. Do I have grouping? No, I can't group any of these terms. So that's out, and I'm left with the TLC of not 1 which is my problem. Okay, so let's get started. Our first step, remember, is to multiply the leading coefficient and my constant term. So two times 12 equals 24. All right, my second step is to find two numbers that add to 11 and multiply to 24. So I want it to multiply to 24 and add to 11. So let's think a little bit about our possibilities here. We could have 2 and 12, we could have 24 and 1, or we could have 8 and 3, or 6 and 4. Well, the only ones of these that add up to 11 are 8 and 3. So we're going to have to choose 8 and 3. Now in the third step, I'm going to break this up and use the 8 and 3 to split up the 11. So I'm going to have 2x squared plus 8x plus 3x plus 12. Now I can solve by grouping. So I'm going to group these two terms here and these two here. And I'm going to get 2x times x plus 4 plus 3 times x plus 4. All right, and this, when I factor these, when I group them, are 2x plus 3 times x plus 4. And that is how I solved that one. Now, it's always good to check your answer. 
So we want to make sure that when we foil this guy out, we're going to get the same thing we started with, and I will leave you to do that. Okay, in this example, I have 5x squared minus 14x plus 8. So before I do anything, before I try to factor it, I need to figure out what I'm factoring. So is it the greatest common factor? No. I don't have any common factors here. Is it a difference of two squares? No, I don't have two squares. Is it a perfect square trinomial? No, five and eight are not perfect squares. Is it a trinomial with a leading coefficient of one? No, my leading coefficient is five. Grouping? No, I can't group these terms. So it has to be a TLC, not one. Okay, first step, I have to multiply my leading coefficient and my constant term. So five times eight equals 40. And now, my second step, I need to find two numbers that multiply to 40 and add to negative 14. Notice that this guy here is negative. So what multiplies to 40? Well, we know 4 and 10, or 2 and 20, or 40 and 1. And do any of these add to negative 14? Well, none of my numbers I put here are negative, but they could be. Remember, if we have a negative times a negative, it'll be a positive. So I think I can use that. Negative 14 is negative 4 plus negative 10. So I think I should change these. Negative 4 and negative 10. Now I can use these guys in the third step. So I'll split, I'll break this guy up. So I'll have 5x squared minus 4x minus 10x plus eight. So now I can solve by grouping. So I can group these first two terms and I will get x times 5x minus four plus, let's see, um, two times 5x minus four. Notice that I could have had minus two here, but I want these two factors here to be the same. So I would have had a plus over here and I need a minus. So you can kind of work it out however you need it to be. So this will equal x plus 2 times 5x minus 4. All right, let's do one more. Okay, so in this example I have negative 3x squared minus 17x minus 10. So let's go through a checklist and see what we have. Is it the greatest common factor? Hmm. This one? Because my leading coefficient is negative, I'm gonna to wanna to factor out a negative one. So actually, in a way, it is greatest common factor. So we'll put like a half check mark here. So we're gonna factor out a negative one, and I have three x squared plus 17 x plus 10. And now I can treat this like something I can factor using one of my methods. And just keep in mind that that negative one is there. So is it a difference of two squares? No, I don't have a difference of two squares. Is it a perfect square trinomial? No, because three and 10 are not perfect squares. Is it a trinomial with a leading coefficient of one? No, my leading coefficient is three. Is it a grouping problem? No, I can't group these. And is it a trinomial of a leading coefficient of not one? Yes. I have three. All right, so our first step is to multiply my leading coefficient and my constant term. So I have three times 10, that equals 30. And now I have to figure out what multiplies to 30 and what adds to 17, that middle term there. So what multiplies to 30? Well, we have three and 10, we have 30 and one, we have 15 and two, so do any of these add to 17? I think so, 15 and two. So we have 15 and two. Keep those in mind, and now we can split up this trinomial. So I'm gonna get three x squared plus 15 x plus two x plus 10. And now I can treat this like grouping. So I'll group these first two terms, and I'm gonna get three x times x plus five plus two times x plus five, and I'll get three x plus two times x plus five. 
And now we should check our answer to make sure that we get what we have. And if we checked our answer at this point, we would find out that we do not have what we started with. Why is that? Well, it's because we forgot that negative one. That guy needs to be brought down. So the answer is actually going to be negative one times three X plus two times X plus five. Now we're finished. That is why it's super important to check your answer because I guarantee it's so easy to leave that off. Okay, now I will leave you to try the problems at the bottom of your guided notes. Thank you.